Da da da! Hello! Who's going to be the first person this evening? Shegu Fatima, good evening. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Mofelala, good evening. Riyum, good evening. Guys, as you're coming in, please start to share. Good evening, Esther. Jake, good evening. Theophilus, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Please start to share and also invite your friends and family. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hola, Lua. Good evening. It's nice to see you again. Rochelle White, how are you? Riyomi, good evening. Daniel, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining. Please start to share as you're coming in. Thank you. Someone has shared already. The name is in Russian, so I can't read the name, but thank you. Uluwatoyin, good evening. Thank you very much, guys. How is your Tuesday so far? I hope it's been fruitful. Pate, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Just to be assured, Dr. Sunday is here. So don't worry, it's not just going to be my pretty face. So it's going to be pretty face and brain as well. <laughs> Mijele, how are you? How are you doing? Hi guys, thank you for sharing. A few people have shared, so let's all share, please. Thank you, Riyomi. Uluwa Kayade, good evening. Omonike, good evening. So guys, how are you? We've only got two more days for the contest. So get going guys. The contest ends on Thursday, which is the 25th. Two more days, two more days. Eight categories, five different prizes. 50 people can win. Wow, Bumi, good evening. Hello Biggie Biggie, how are you? Olani, good evening. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Good evening. Pastor Nikki, how are you? Good, good, good. Okay, guys. So, let me just remind you. There are a few things, right? Yesterday, Pastor put a list of books that are already on Amazon. 18 out of 53. I thought it was only going to publish 50. Now, it's extended to 53. So, 18... Because some of them were published before. Okay, it's just, it's just eluded me to this, actually, that some of them were published before. But now, we've got 53 in total. So now it's already published 18 that are already on Amazon. There was a list on there. I would also try... I would also post a list. Maybe not right now, but I'll post a list on the comment section so that you can see the titles of the book. I didn't remember to tell you yesterday because, you know, yesterday was so interesting. That was dumbfounded, and I didn't talk much as I usually do. So, just a reminder. And then, also guys, let me remind you of the prizes for this contest. So that you can get your working cap on. And get on sending us the entry. We've had a few entries. The more, the merrier. The 50 people that can win this contest. Not just one, two, three. 50 people because you know it's Dr. Sunday's Golden Jubilee so it's going to be 50 in a couple of days. I am calm or I cannot keep calm. I am actually calm today. A few days to the Golden Jubilee celebration from Friday the 26th to the actual birthday which is the 28th of May on Sunday. Yes, I cannot wait. It's not my birthday, it's Dr. Sunday's birthday, but I still can't wait. So guys, let me just tell you what the uh, contest prizes are. There are five different prizes for 50 people. I've mentioned that already, so let me do that again. <laughs> Pastor Nikki, I'm a magician. Long hair in the morning, shut up. <laughs> Pastor Nikki, yeah, come on. <laughs> Okay, that's I know, I know. Thank you. I am a magician. You know, ladies are magicians. So, the prizes to win for this contest are number one, Pastor Sunday's books. 
you know i've just mentioned again 18 18 books were published already this month so there are more to come 53 in total 50 for the celebration but another three um were, were published a few days were published prior so 53 books hmm. okay secondly you would be you could win a skype talk with pastor sunday you already know if you don't know well check one of the videos i have mentioned this so many times what that did for me a skype talk with dr sunday changed my life changed my view of pastors changed my view of uh, somebody of his caliber and here i am right now in front of you talking so this might do the same thing for you or even better and then we have number three which is Pastor Sunday, as, as Pastor Sunday's personal visitor, this one should be interesting. So if you've never been here in Kiev, Ukraine before, this is an opportunity. You've been invited. If you're a winner in this kind, in, in winner of this, then what you could do is come here and see Pastor Sunday yourself and meet with him. And then another gift, he says, lunch with Pastor Sunday in Kiev. Again, I have said this over and over again. That lunch is not lunch, it's actually feast with Dr. Sunday. It's going to be a feast. You can never just have a lunch. The table is just presented like a feast. So many different varieties of food. So this would be feast with Pastor Sunday. And the fifth um, prize is personal question time. One hour with Pastor Sunday or Dr. Sunday if you prefer. You can see I do change from pastor to doctor. I don't know. I like doing that. So... You have a personal question time, much like what we're doing tonight, or what we did, we've been doing for the last few nights, for a few nights, weeks now. So you can have your own personal question time with him. You can ask him any question that you want. Ask help, tell him whatever you want to tell him. It doesn't have to be a question. You can just talk to him, however you prefer. So that's going to be another one-hour personal question time with him. So that's five prizes in all, and we have eight categories that you can enter into. And we have seven people, best, best doers, so seven people can win best doers. So many people can enter into this. It's not just for one person to win. Seven people can win best doers. Seven people can win most graceful performers. Six people can win Mozilla's book reader. Six people can win the follow, best followers and students of Pastor Sunday's teachings. And then six, greatest, six people can win greatest DSA teaching promoters and then seven other people can win best creator of five minutes videos and then another five people can win best DSA video biography creators and then another six people can win the most outstanding DSA golden jubilee congratulatory messages so there you go eight categories many people can win 50 people in total so there's no excuse there's no reason why you cannot enter this contest please Go ahead, check them out. It's all on the pages, all DSA pages. You will see the information about the contest. So you've got two more days that you can enter. So without further ado, after this, look at the categories and look at the one that you can enter. Everyone should be entering this contest. So, thank you. Let me catch my breath. Okay. <laughs> Nobody is chasing me. I just want to get on with it. Right. Okay, yesterday we finished with a big, big bang. But before I go into yesterday's summary, let me just turn so you can say hello to Dr. Sunday. Hello. Yay. Happy, guys. Yes, because I know some of you are wondering, is he really here? Is he not here? Yes, he's there. Okay, right. So yesterday was so interesting. <laughs> the question that shut me down well not shut me down shut my mouth <laughs> was the question which is uh does dr sunday ever have a bad moment or what does he do in bad moments the exact question was um let me look at it uh, uh, uh. bad moments okay sir how do you handle those bad moments Okay, and I thought at first that, hmm, what kind of question is this? And I should have known better, actually. Because of my own bad moments, I just asked the question and thought it would just answer in a few minutes and it will be done. We spent almost an hour on this one question and it was amazing. 
really opened my eyes. And as you know, Dr. Sunday said previously that good and bad works together. It's all good. But yesterday's answer about bad moments, really, that is the ultimate. If you did not see this, or even if you did, I would urge you to check this video out again. It's on this page and it would be on YouTube soon. YouTube Sunday Adelaja Official, so check it out. The answer is just too much details. You know, it gave several examples of bad moments that actually in the end turned out to be the best thing that's ever happened about other people's stories, about other people. Then he started telling us stories about himself, even his current situation with the court and being grounded and being here in Ukraine and how that has bore out these positive fruits of Facebook, of um, YouTube, of the teachings that you are, we're all enjoying and um, not just enjoying. I think sometimes when I say enjoying, it makes it so trivial. But what is helping us to develop as human beings, as personalities. So, everything works together for good. But the explanation is just so detailed that now, I don't even actually believe anything bad happens anymore. To me, everything is all good. I might not see it that way when it's happening, but I trust that it would work out for good. So, I hope you guys feel the same. And if you don't, well, go back and watch it. Something will come out of it for you. I actually got a testimony today. Well done to the person that sent me the testimony about this teaching yesterday. So, guys, you watch it. You might get something out of it yourself. Um, well, well, well. I don't know if the person wants me to share the testimony. So, if the person wants me to share it, I, the person will tell me because I can see that uh, the person is... Uh, well, uh, okay, that's true. I could share the testimony. Okay, the testimony was, <coughs> that's true, that's true, okay. I'm going to share it. The testimony was that um, after listening to the teaching yesterday, as this happened to the person today, this morning, the person had an overdraft in their account, and with that overdraft, um, the person was paid this, this morning. But instead of the bank... Um, and the account was already overdrawn. So rather than the bank just, you know, take the difference of the overdraft and let the account continue as it is, the bank decided to um, cancel the overdraft and took all the salary from that person's account. So in a nutshell, the person will usually go into a panic if a situation like this happens and think, well, I don't deserve um, for the bank to cancel the overdraft without any warning, without any... Um, any information or even give giving her an alternative. So her salary came in, the overdraft ate all the salary and all the bills and everything cannot go out because everything is gone and the, the bank has cancelled her overdraft and given her no overdraft. So she's uh, because of this teaching yesterday about good and bad and you know bad moments and everything turning out for good, she didn't she stayed calm and she's still calm she's not worried she's at peace she knows that everything will be okay so you know that for me i think that's really important only by listening to this yesterday this person came to this realization this knowledge and the situation happened the following day so you know you don't know who's going to be blessed so this is one reason as well guys that i think that we should all share this um, teachings because somebody else that's not watching live might be able to get something out of it and be at peace. We need others to be at peace. So that was the testimony, really. It's a real life experience. It's simple, but very significant. So thank you. I hope uh, the person is fine with it. But I didn't mention the name, so I'm okay. All right. So thank you, guys. Um, let's start today with our questions. Guys, you know what to do. If you have any questions about Dr. Sunday, we've only got a few days left. It should be about Dr. Sunday. Please send it to me, but write Q, colon, and then your question so that I can identify it or it can be identified easily through the trail of comments. So thank you very much. Without further ado, guys, let's start. Da -da -da. Okay, today. Hi. Okay, this person says that, does DSA have misunderstanding with his wife, Pastor Vasse, and how do you deal with it? 
you know, my miss, my answer will sound almost unbelievable. Uh, it depends on what you mean by misunderstanding. Do we all have? Uh, do we both have various and different opinions from time to time? Oh, definitely, regularly. But like misunderstanding, like quarrel or conflict or things like that, not really. And when I was uh, at, <laughs> I used to, at, at first the first few years of our marriage, or let's say. Uh, yeah, there were misunderstandings the first few years in the sense, not like quarrel or conflict again, just like I didn't know what she was thinking, she was not telling me, and you know, I was just thinking everything was okay, so maybe that was very minor, very subtle. But first 15 years of my marriage, I was thinking that I was the one who was doing well, that we were not having conflict or problem with the family. Until I spoke to my niece, uh, one of my niece uh, told me, oh wow, if you don't have those any challenge or crisis or problems like that, you know, kudos goes to your wife. I said, oh, okay, tell me about that. Then she says, she explained to me that normally it's the women that are always troublemakers. Women are always the, and she's a woman herself, but the women are always the ones that are always, uh, nervous and anxious and fearful and uh, uh, capricious and hysterical and normally it's the women that are floating emotions that was when I got my another revelation to for myself that oh, okay so now on the basis of that understanding I would say all thanks go to Pastor Bosa that we don't have crisis we don't have uh, disagreement as such, no. And I think Pastor Boss's temperament uh, has helped as well, as well as our understanding and maturity. So she doesn't cause me any problem, almost never, almost never. And like I always say of myself that I can live with a she devil, <laughs> I think. Yeah, I don't, I, I think I can live with anybody just just follow the principles the truth that you know or that uh, you know live live in the light I know some basic principles of relationship marriage responsibility men who men are supposed to be in the family who is a man what is marriage who is a woman how to treat her basically let me tell let me just give you a few of those secrets number one Always treat your wife the way you want Christ to, t to treat you. As far as I'm concerned, a wife must be treated the way you want God to treat you. So if I want Jesus, and I have this, you know, it's, a, it's biblical because the Bible says that the relationship of Christ with the church is that the relationship of a husband to the wife. That means Jesus is showing me, he is demonstrating to me how I am supposed to behave to the lady, to her bride, to his bride. And since women and daughters of God, Christian women are his daughters, so Jesus was demonstrating to me in the way he treats me, how I am supposed to treat his daughters so and i know the way god treats me treats me with we and the way jesus treats me i'm always looking for understanding from him i'm always looking for his covering i'm always looking for his mercy i'm always at you know i'm always expecting him to be kind to me i'm always expecting him to be nice to me to be not to be judgmental of me, not to condemn me, not to punish me, not to rebuke me, but to love me, to be warm towards me, to fondle me, to care for me, to meet my needs, to answer my needs even before I ask ask of them. So all the, I know exactly what I want God to do for me. I know how I want my relationship with God to be, how I want Him to relate to me. So since it says that's the way 
Jesus is the example of a, of a man, of the ideal of a, a husband, and is the ideal model or prototype of how a husband is supposed to treat a woman. I just got it. You must always treat your wife the way you want Christ to treat you. So if I don't want Christ to be rough with me, to, you know, abuse me, to mistreat me, I would not like to be mistreated by Christ. So I better behave and treat his daughter the way I would like him to treat me. So that's my basic uh, principle number one. Principle number two is I have come to discover that if you want a lady to, to be happy and to, you know, it's just, it's not just for the lady to be happy. If you just want to treat a lady right, the best way to treat a woman, that I gave you the first principle. The second principle, the best way to treat a woman is to always look at her, no matter how old she is, even if she's 80 years old or 70 years old years old or 60 years old no matter how old she is always relate to her as if she's a two-year-old girl that is defenseless that you know the way a two-year-old girl in those dress you know when she's dressed up she's in dress and she's beautiful and she's and but she's she's uh, vulnerable as well She's about falling. She might be, uh, imagine that two-year-old girl, uh, you know, walking towards the edge or towards a cliff or a hole somewhere there or, you know, <laughs> a valley or something. Oh, yeah, and you are the father. So the way you will treat a two-year-old girl, when you see her, you are happy to see her. Hello, how are you? Sharon, come, 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 Sharon. That's one. You are happy to show her, to see her. Always show that kind of happiness, excitement towards your wife. Number two, you never ever want to see that girl cry or be sad. Any time you see that she's crying or she's sad, what's wrong? Come, come, come. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong with you? Come, 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 come. You want to take her in your hand. You want to say, no, 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 no. What should you be crying about? No, you should be crying. That is another thing you should do to a woman. Never allow her to tell you she's in problem always look after her always just like you will run to save that girl from falling off the cliff always be proactive in taking care of her and in finding out how she's doing so uh just like you treat a little girl no matter how strong she is and no matter even what position she is occupying in society even if she's the prime minister or she's the managing director of our company. She needed. She needs to be treated like a vulnerable person, uh, like a weak vessel, like that two-year-old girl that needs your constant attention. You know the way if a two-year-old is near you, and you are you're always keeping an eye on her. You're always keeping an eye on her. Why are you always keeping an eye on her? You don't want her to. You don't want anything to try and her. You don't want anything to damage her. You don't want anything to harm her. So you are always keeping an eye on her. Hello, are you okay there? Okay, don't go too far. Okay, are you okay? Okay, may wash out. Something is there. Okay, are you okay? Oh, you are, are you fine? You know, just the, that same kind of care, constant care, keeping an eye, letting your girl or your woman or your wife know that you are there for her and that she's under your protection. And that she's, uh, she's, you know, you you are not forgetting about her, and that you are washing after her, and that you are, you know, you are, you you are, uh, you are washing her back. That constant reminder to a lady is very important to keep her happy and to keep your home happy. Another thing that uh, I do, which is my own personal principle, uh, that has, I believe has helped me over the years, is that. I have a principle that I've told myself about, that I've told my wife about, that I've preached about as well. That is, I don't ever leave my home without my wife smiling. I don't want to go preach to anybody. I don't want to go to any work. I don't want to leave the house if she's not happy. 
So because if I, I'm, I'm in the business of making people happy as a pastor, and if I'm not making the closest person to me happy, I don't care who I'm making happy. So I don't want to do, step out of my house if she's not smiling, if she's not happy. So I would rather not go to preach. I would rather not go out. So that is uh, another thing that could really keep a girl happy and uh, your family satisfied. Another principle of mine that a lot of men might not subscribe to is that I never open my envelope. I never have money. You shake my pocket, I never have money. If you want to see, I never have money. You see, I never have money. I don't want to blame my wife for it. You don't blame her. But uh, it's because I'm not in charge, you see. I'm not in charge. <laughs> I'm never in charge. So, what that means is that um, anytime I get money, the envelope goes to my wife first. Unless it's something else, something like, you know, other things that are. But if it's my salary or my income or anything like that, she, I, don't even, I don't even remember the last. I don't even get to see it these days. <laughs> I don't even see it. I don't even see it. I used to see the Titan offering, but now I think she just does that for me too as well. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, I'm not talking about my business interest and other contracts, I mean, things that are, that are not, but I'm talking about income, my income, right? So, uh, yeah, but why is that important? That is important to give her assurance, to let her know, I believe so much in you. You are my life. You, you know, she knows I don't have any life without her because you don't have any life without the money. Well, yeah, man, you don't have any life without the money. And I, I never have money because, you know, I make myself sus uh, susceptible to her. I make myself dependable on her. Just to prove a point to her that she's that important to me. And she's she's in charge. She holds me. So uh, I think that's important. Uh, then um, another thing that could help, uh, like I have a golden rule. Never raise your voice at your wife. I never raise my voice. You know, everywhere, like here in Ukraine, I'm a boss. I'm a big, big boss. But when I come up, <laughs> I'm like a lamb. <laughs> I just get instructions. <laughs> I just get instructions when to take out the dirt and uh, when to go and pray with the children or to go and work with them or to clean something or to help take some, you know. Just, uh, just like a lamb, just like a lamb that has been taken to the. No, 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 no. <laughs> that was Jesus. <laughs> that was Jesus. <laughs> but I, I make myself to be like that because uh, the sign, the Bible says, and this is where I base this on. The Bible says that he that wants to be the head should be the least. And the Bible says we are the head. He that wants to be the first should be the least. You that wants to be the greatest should be the low, low, uh, should be the lesser. So that's exactly where I got that from. Since the Bible says that a man is the head of the family, that means that for me to be the head, I must be the least. For me to be the head, I must be less. For me to be the head, I must uh, be the, the servant of the home. Servant to my wife, to my children. I might be the, 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 uh, the, yeah, the slave of the home. That's what the Bible says. If you want to be the first, if you want to be the head, to be the head, you must be the least. That is the key. So, uh, if you operate by those principles, I think, uh, you know, let me give you another one. Don't you lecture your spouse, especially a woman. Because women are more sensitive, like 14 times more sensitive than the man. They, they don't have that shock absorber that we have. But so, uh, so to be lect to sit a woman down, be lecturing her, I told you, I'm the head of this family. I told you to do this, or I told you not to do this. Don't ever behave yourself like that. Okay, 
you know, to be lecturing her like you are, like you are rebuking a kid or like you are talking to a little kid. You don't treat a woman like that. She did not leave her father's house to be treated that way. She does not deserve it. If she has left her father's house, she sacrificed to come up to, for you to be the husband. It's because you, that's why you must honor her. That's why you must respect her and treat her with dignity and honor. Don't you lecture her and treat her like a small street girl or like a school girl. So your wife is not a school girl and you are not a principal. You are not a school principal. You are not a school director and she is not a school pupil, okay? Okay, okay. I think if you just, anybody could, could uh, live a, a stress-free family life. Uh, is you know strife crisis free family just by abiding by those principles that's that's what I that's what I think and I hope that will bless and uh, help some families who knows but if you act like that if you are able if you are strong enough to act like that believe you me you don't have problems another thing that I that has helped me from the very first day of my marriage which I was hesitant of sharing, but maybe I should share, just share it anyway. I told my wife that her wish will always be my command. I told her, your wish, your, your, your wish, your will, your wishes will always be my command. I will treat your wishes as a command. I will treat your wishes and your, 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 your desire as in fact I was doing it so much that at the point she was saying hey take it easy have this stuff as if you are going to be stand before the jury if you don't do something no no take it easy take it. it's okay you are trying that's all right. that's good enough so it's not it doesn't take too much to really please a lady yeah that's it <laughs> OMG guys <laughs> I've seen some of your comments. This is like a lot. And, okay, where should I start with summary? Summary, summary, summary. First thing, the question was, how does, does DSA have misunderstanding with wife and how does he deal with it? So, he deals with it with principles. He gave us several principles that helps him with his wife. So, the answer was, no, we don't really have quarrels. We might disagree on issues that, you know, we have different opinions, but we don't actually have quarrels. We don't engage in that at all. And the reasons why they don't give that, but the principles are really interesting. But before I tell you the principles, let me just remind you that he also mentioned that Pastor Boss's principle is, is temperament. His wife's temperament also helps. So, guys, you also have to apply, guys, when I say guys, both male and female, principle plus temperament. That's important because I'm looking at all this that, wow, it has to take somebody with that temperament that Dr. Sunday just mentioned, their right temperament, to be able also to honor him when he does all these things. So listen to them. Always treat your wife the way you want Christ to treat you as a man. Ah! I can't believe that. Hmm. Always treat your wife the way you want Christ to treat you. Actually, it works both ways as well. So women only look for men that treat you the way that they want Christ to treat them. Simple. I can't believe that. We're hearing that. My head was just ringing. Blum, blum, blum. All these men, where are you? Treat your wife the way you want Christ to treat you. I have a whole you. series on that. The men should know. listen to that. Yes. You know what? Actually, Dr. Sunday just did you another favor. Men he, he, and women, listen to the series on relationship. It's on the playlist, which is on YouTube, which is Sunday at the Larger Official. Please check out the playlist. The playlist would help you. And YouTube is your friend. So check out the one on relationship. So the second thing is, if you want to treat a woman right, always relate to her like a defenseless child. When I first heard this, I thought, hmm, defenseless child, what does that mean? I don't like somebody to treat me with, like I'm defenseless. But that's because of my hmm, messed up, screwed up head. But I'm fixing it. So defenseless in the sense that 
you look at that child like, okay, I need to care for this child. This child is my responsibility. So as a man, you look at that, your wife, as somebody that is your responsibility. You take care and protect that child. So that's what it means. Because it took me a minute, no, actually some seconds to get it. That, oh, no defenseless as in I can do whatever I like with her. I can treat her anyhow. No, defenseless is that it's my responsibility to protect and care for. And then it went on to, um, and like a father. So he said, number three, personal principle. I don't step out of the house without my high wife being happy. <laughs> I know this would be too good, too much for some guys with ego, but please help yourself. I don't step out of the house. It's his own personal principle, which is without Pastor Bosset being happy. That's amazing. This is just like music to my ears. And then there's another one. My salary goes to my wife. I can't laugh here. I don't even want to laugh because if I start to laugh, there's going to be a problem. My salary goes to my wife. Okay, guys. Is that the problem? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> problem is an understatement. Yeah. Guys, the advice is if my salary goes to my wife. Okay, I encourage you. I dare you to do that. I, it's a big problem, sir. This is a Why? big problem. Why should it? So, how many people is going to give their salary to their wives? They What's the problem with that? Okay, the problem is, they don't, men will not give your, their salary to their wives. Why not? Because they want to have their upper hand. They want to have the uh, money. They want to make sure that their wife comes to them to ask them money. But that's exactly why I am giving, the, that's exactly why I am giving my salary to her because... I think I will never get to a place of humiliating my wife to that, to that degree. Mm. You know, for me as a man, I think it's a disgrace to sit down there every month and my wife is coming to tell me, well, the uh, yeah. $1,000 you gave last week <laughs> <laughs> is not enough. Can you please uh, add two to it? <laughs> And then she's coming to me and say, Pastor, um, you know, then I will be asking for a report. I say, okay, what did you buy? Ah, but it's 2000 now. Ah, so out of 2000 why come? But it's supposed to be. You said you were going to buy fruits and uh, vegetable, But vegetable doesn't cost that much now. Oh, then she will be saying, oh, I bought some uh, pot as well and fork and spoon. Ah, okay, spot and spoon. How much is that one? <laughs> Then, when she needs to do a woman, female thing and a monthly thing, then she will be coming to me. She will not even know how to say that I need some money for what now? Or for the children, or for myself, or for you know, what for yourself? And then she say, oh, I need a pants, or I need a bra, or I, I, what, will I be sitting down there? Am I, am I a total sadist to be able to be doing that kind of thing? I will not treat a human being like that. Talk less of somebody. Who is supposed to be my wife? Somebody that I knelt down my knees. For three hours. To, to, just to convince to marry me. I was the one begging her. She never begged me to, marry, to be her husband. I was the one begging her to be my wife. So if I was convincing her, begging her to be my wife, I never told her that I was going to humiliate her to the extent of her asking for money from me. I rather I was telling her she was going to have everything. That's why she agreed. So if I change that, it means that I deceived her. So, you know, it would be a lie. So, and when I was telling her, please, marry me, you'll be happy, you'll be the happiest woman and that. So, but was I lying? Mm. Just to get her? That would be wickedness. So, Please. so I will not do that. So guys, um, there you, you've heard it. So, that's the Third, no, that's the fourth principle about your salary and it is totally humiliating when guys expect you to give account on money and he wouldn't do that because he loves her he respects her, he values her you know, he treats her like that young child that you know, she is in his eyes so that's all good and guys, I know that you know, you already if you're married and you're in a relationship and they don't treat you like this, please don't get angry tonight okay I feel sorry for you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. This is just me. Don't get angry, you know. Just try and work through these kind of things because <laughs> you will get angry, especially if you're married and your spouse doesn't treat you this way. 
you'll be totally pissed. But don't be. Just get this wisdom and start using it um, to build your own relationship. So another thing is um, never raise your voice at your wife, which is like key. You know, women don't like that. You're not a schoolmaster. Um, and the pastor said, he that wants to be the head has to be the list. Or he that wants to rule has to be the list. And then don't lecture your wife, right? Don't lecture your wife, please. And then I, uh, I told my wife, um, your wishes would always be my command. So he's, he told his wife, your wishes would always be my command. I saw a question there, sir. Somebody said that, what if your uh, spouse or your wife is not good with money? So uh, in that situation with finances. Very, very good question. Very, very cogent, absolutely adequate question at this hour. I told you what I'm doing in my family right now. You remember what I just said a few minutes ago? You're just answering the question, if, you know, that I was asked about my family. So I'm not saying that is exactly what you are saying. I'm not teaching. I'm just sharing what obtains in my own home, right? Now, when it comes to... Uh, money giving your money or your envelope to your wife that's what i do i don't know, think that's what you should do especially if you think that your wife is irresponsible financially so if a woman does not control herself and does not control her expenditure or definitely is this the most disciplined person in the family that's supposed to that's supposed to be in charge of money so if it is the man that is more disciplined yes he should be in charge of money but not in charge of expenditure. She, you know, for example, even, my, even though my wife is the one who is taking care of the envelope, who I give the money to, but she is not just doing anything she wants with it. We sit down together. We don't longer do that. But the first few years, maybe the first four years of the family or five years, maybe six, we were always sitting down every month to plan out our budget. So I will, will say this is how much we have this month. And we have policies. This is another thing I've taught also. If you go to my teachings on, yeah, on YouTube, you will see that you know, don't, I give all those principles there. So what we have is family financial policy. And what that means is that, okay, we know 10% goes to tithe, 15% goes to offering, I mean, another 5% goes to, goes to offering. This one goes to our families. This one goes to the few that show the children. This one goes for our own pocket money. This one goes to maintenance. This one goes for investment. This one goes for saving. You know, that those are policies. They are just stable. We don't change them for anything. So when anything comes, you know, she is the one that is more disciplined. Because with me, everything disappears immediately. So that's even the more reason why it was the right decision for me to take that she should be in charge of money. So if it's the opposite, if your wife is not disciplined, then sit down together to build the plan together first to come up with the financial policy to decide what is going where. And then you are just the one. The way, whoever is more disciplined is the one who should be, um, yeah, you should be the manager. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, guys, um, you've heard it there, but the important thing is that this is on YouTube already, this teaching in details. And Chioma just kindly reminded us that YouTube is our friend. So go on YouTube. Pastor have dealt with this with both men and women. So it's not just the woman side where, you know, you have to do certain things as men. Because I can see some men right now are like, hmm, 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 hmm. But don't worry, don't shoot the messengers. This is just what he does. And if you want to put it, the good practices, they've been married for so long and they're happily married. So... I would urge you as well to follow at least uh, 100%. <laughs> I wanted to say at least 5%, no, <laughs> 100%. I, do, I would urge you to at least try and see the result of it because the result actually might be a motivation for you. If it doesn't work, you wouldn't continue. They've been together for such a long time. So, guys, um, go on YouTube, Sunday at the Larger Official, and you will find a playlist that will help you um, related to this subject and you can help you over 30 hours of uh, teaching on this, as Chioma have said. So, YouTube is your friend, okay? Right, let's move on. 
So uh, this question actually is related well, do you, to... Do you, did you recap everything? Did you mention yeah. all the points? No? I think I did. I think I mentioned the points. And because obviously there's, this teaching is also on YouTube, then, you know, I, I don't think we should waste more time on it. You know, guys, what do you think? Yeah? Yeah? I'm thinking for you. I'm your rep here, you know? So, because you don't want to read the comments, though. Okay, let me read the comments. I think that is good, actually. Let me read the comments. So we have here. Uh -huh. The boss has a boss. That's from Shegun Fatima. That's like when you mentioned about you've been the boss in Ukraine and boy in the house, you know. Lion and the lamb. But my wife doesn't have doesn't act like a boss. Yeah. She just she's just a partner. So right. it's not a good thing for a okay. wife to act like a boss. Yes. She might just got get the opposite uh, response. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, ladies, I'm telling you here, the temperament thing is key in what you said. You know, if you think that you're going to be a boss as a woman, men don't play with that. Even though you're given the opportunity to be a boss, don't be a boss or be wise. Because if you're acting like a boss, you're going to boss you out. I'm telling you, men will just change back to the way they were supposed to be. So temperament is important. The right temperament. Boss, Pastor Boss's temperament, everybody knows. Calm and collected. So even though she's given the authority to be a boss, she still knows who she is. And she remains who she she is, who she's supposed to be. So don't take uh, advantage of the situation. Anyway, I don't even need to tell you. If you do, the men will do what they need to do as well. So um, let me read on the comments, okay? It's, it says it's big. Um, Oriyomi says that it's because DSA is secured. Um, P said you are a, a simple pastor at home. I think he's just repeating what you said. We need DSA men, men of men varsity. That's Judy. Men, what? men DSA men varsity. <laughs> well, Pastor, I think Pastor Derek is going to agree with this. So, uh, Actually, Pastor Derek agrees. In time. <laughs> it will be uh, Nick Nick. I think says it will be. It will have been lovely to hear your wife as well on his on this debate interview. Okay, it's not a debate, actually. It's a question to Dr. Sunday, and Dr. Sunday asks, answer the question based on what he does. So it's not a debate. It's not, uh, is it true that, I, you know, no, they're not debating. Maybe I should or I shouldn't do it. No, it's a fact <laughs> that this is what I do. This is how my relationship stays without misunderstanding. So if you want to take it, take it. If you don't want to take it, it's not debatable. It's just facts. Truth of his life. Okay, so she Sandra says, hmm, awesome. Yes, she Sandra, I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> what did Theophilus say? Do you say, do you, do you think if you were not a Christian, you would have been able to touch more lives? Okay, that's a question for later. Sorry, I shouldn't have read that yet. I would have, I'll read it later. Um, well, am I really, many of them are not like you, your wife, do you say, yes, many touch of food. them. Yes, Who's many. Them? Well, women? I think no. It says many of them. Yeah, post women. Many of them are not like your wife. Many of them sees a caring man as a as a as being weak, or to go I out see, there to see. I already see for problem themselves. with that. Statement. Yeah, I see problem too. <laughs> so I tell why them no problem. Why should you be saying many of them? them. Why should you refer to women as them? That is, to me, that's already uh, de delegatory so, for to some extent. Mm -hmm. That is already putting them down somewhere, you know. And that is falling to the stereotype of men thinking that they are just, this just the way they are. They are. Women are like this. This is the way they are supposed to be treated. Why should you do that? We are the same. Yeah. And you should treat them with honor. Talk about them with respect. Talk about them with honor. Not just call them them. Very good point, sir, and thank you for actually um, pointing that out because it's true. When I was reading this and you say many of them, actually the tone of that, even though you're not the one saying it, but reading it, saying many of them, and you mentioned his wife, you could say many women, 
or you know that would even be softer but say many of them it shows that <laughs> That's why you have problems. <laughs> no, you didn't say you have problems. I'm just in my big mouth. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me move on, okay? Let me move on. <laughs> and then he says, um, let's move on. I think we also need to ask Pastor Bosset. Women are leading, so we have to balance it also for the men. Don't worry, your Phyllis. This is not another debate. Why? 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 It's not a debate. It's not women leading or men leading. This is just Dr. Sunday giving account of what he does. If you don't want to do it, do leave it. Don't worry. But there's teaching on it. I think we should check it out. And then Jane says, great principle DSA. Awesome. Uh, there's a lot of laughter going on at some point. <laughs> Yes, Julie is agreeing with you that yes, it's totally humili hum humiliation. That's with the asking for money. Complete humiliation, that's also Amarchi saying. Joke said, or Joke, yeah. You are a red gem. Your salary goes to your wife. Esther says, some women don't even know how much their husbands earn. Talk less of giving them the whole salary to manage. That's true. But like you've, uh, you, uh, you've had my clarification, right? That she's not just taking the money and doing anything she wants with it. We come up together, we sit down together and come up with financial principles. Principles of how the money will be spent. But only they are in her hands. She's the one that actually allocates them to those places. But we make the principles. How much goes there, how much goes this, how much goes there, how much goes that. But she is actually the one that executes that. That's what we mean. Okay, thank you. So further clarification there, uh, but he's already clarified that before. So um, somebody says, Chief Sandra says that you are just exceptional DSA. Or Monica says PSA is very different from all men that have that have known. So many men can never put their wives in charge of finding. Finance never also some no, you people the way people are talking, you are just breaking my heart. I want to believe that what you people are saying are true. That <laughs> this is actually the way things are, the way you people are responding. <laughs> I think the way I am, that if it's not fifty percent of the men that are like that, but I think it should be a good size of men that are like that, at least ten percent, twenty percent, thirty percent. I actually think that maybe thirty percent of the men should be like me. In Europe, at least, in Europe, European men, maybe because you poor Africans, that's why you're talking like this. But European men, I think, are like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Judy, don't, you don't let us go into this. I, I'm a woman, I've never seen any man like that. I'm not married, but still, I've never seen anyone give their I money to anyone. Heard I've to not the heard, women. no, I've not heard. It's in just, England, too? Yes, in England. White, black. I have free. I have friends that are white. They never. They don't do that, and that's why they have, they all have problems in their relationship, though. <laughs> so <laughs> there goes your answer. <laughs> PS is different from all men that have. <laughs> so many men can never put their wives in charge of finances. Never. Also, some men are used to saying that. I'm the head of the all the time. <laughs> <laughs> the Christian men, especially. <laughs> Some bring home relation, relations to live with them without their consent, without the wife's consent. They don't care whether the wife, the wives are angry or happy. Lord, PSA is just phenomenal, just too good. The way he he thinks is very different. Some women are just not lucky. Now, wow. <laughs> Oh God. God, you lucky. No, it's just like how could you be lucky if you are talking about ninety percent? You mm -hmm. are saying that majority of the men are not like that. So it's not that who will be lucky. It means everybody is not lucky. So it's not about being so, lucky. So it's not about not lucky. Some women are just not lucky. That's despite... exactly what I'm saying. So how would they be lucky to get a husband like that when there are no husband like that? Basically, that's what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> so why should they say they are not lucky? Just that we are not producing those kind of women. And that's why I did all those teachings. We have to produce those kind of men now. <laughs> and I have a whole lot of series. But when we finish, actually, if you don't mind, I would like you to call on Pastor Derek because he's getting ready to marry. 
and he's listening to oh. those series right now. Oh. And yes, he's listening to the series. Let us just hear his own opinion. Yeah. Because if, if because you don't just say Pastor Sunday is unique, Pastor Sunday is unique. I'm only unique because of what I know. Yeah. And these things I know, I am making it accessible. Just people don't know they're there. People are struggling because they don't know these things are available. So it's not about being lucky. If you are smart and you are not married, anybody that wants to marry, you make sure they go through that program. And they finish those teachings. Not just teach it here and go through it to here. But to actually make it the principle of their lives. So it's not about lucky. It's about what we know. Okay. Well, um... Well, maybe we, you will understand that differently. Well, uh, it's, yeah, it's what you know, but... Some a lot of people know that they they can they should do something like this that is nice, but they don't want to do it. They get away with it. They manage a relationship who are mediocre, and they continue with it. No one wants to give it with their money. That's why women also are developing themselves so that they can make their own money. But um, somebody's just come up and said, "My husband gives me all his take home salary, yeah, take it's home not pay." What I'm saying. So good news, we found the zero point zero point zero one percent. So I'm interested in reading. I'm something. just surprised why people are saying they are not there. I, mean, I can't believe that. I'm hearing you, but I can't believe it. I just don't think that you people just don't know that's the problem. No, somebody else says that in his 30 something years, I've never seen anybody and I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> so it does, I don't know, I haven't. So I will see. And I'm not going to wait until I get married. I'm going to find him before. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, Frank says, Chi DSA, this is too much, Lord. Thank you. <laughs> That's even Frank. That's your mentee that loves you so much. And it's too much. You, you see? No, they are my mentee, but they have to listen to all my teachings to know me better, to know my principles. <laughs> and then Theophilus says, it's, it's not totally practicable. That's what Theophilus ah, said. Another DSA. mentee, eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not practicable? They've, because they've not heard the whole thing. What I said now is just on, like, by the roadside. I'm just like, just by the passing that I just, I just answered the question. But by the time you know the principles, the reasons why, by the time you listen to the whole teaching about this whole thing, you will see that it's not just practice; it's the only right thing to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just doing something here. This is really funny. It says that uh, DSA, for a man to give the wife his income, I'm sure people will say the woman has licked sweet <laughs> thumb thumb for the man or did some sort of juju for the man to do that. That's an African yes, mentality yes, as know, well. I, I think if, if, if it's really true what you are saying, that men don't, they would not give their salary, they are taking salary to their wives. Then what, what that means is that these men, then it means they see their identity <laughs> and their self-assurance and their security in the income they make. So it means that their salary or their money or their assets are their security. It has their identity. In my own case, I don't have to have money to have identity. My personality and identity, that is excluding money factor. I am Pastor Sunday, who I am by the, by the fact of the, the content of who I of myself, of my heart, of my identity. So my own identity does not have to do with possession or with material things. I, I, am, that's, I think that's where my own... I'm aware that I have cars, but I don't even know what, do you know, I don't even know the names of my, uh, the cars I have. I don't know the name of one of them. Talk less of the brand name, talk less of the whatever, plate number, I don't even know the plate number of any one of them. Or this house, I don't even know, know, where, know where the papers are, by the way. So I'm not identifying myself with, you know, things like that. I am more focused on my real self. And that real self is who I am inside. So it's easy to give our money. 
That is even the easiest thing to do. So I think then if men are so uh, constrained by this question, it means that we should now have to be raising the question of their identity. So what are they, who are they? <clears throat> they have to be established in something more valuable first before they could even become men. Then they will, these issues will not even be coming out in the first place. Interesting. So guys, this is qualified. It's not just for male, it's for men. Okay? And men that are secure in their identity. Their identity is not based on the money that they have or their job or their title. They have personality. They have their identity and self-worth. So they don't need to use money as a bait or a controlling tool. They give it freely knowing that they have much more and they're not worried about their wife. But I'm enjoying this comment, so keep this comment coming. These comments are just making me but, laugh. But I, 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 I must admit though that there are a lot of men that actually see properties or possessions as their identity. Mm -hmm. I was going to court one day, I was ride, uh, going, to, you know, riding my car in town and we were waiting for the court to start. So I was in the car, our car was parked. So I was with a driver with one of my assistants in the car. And then I was, you know, all the other cars were passing by, just by the road, we were sitting by the roadside. And you know, they would stand sometimes at the traffic light, it was in the city. And I saw one guy coming up with uh, a, what do you call it? You call it a Jeep or four wheel mm -hmm. Lexus. You know, is it Jeep we call four it? By four? Yeah. four by four Lexus, yes. So Lexus car, Jeep, big. And I see the way the guy is, you know, just behaving there, just as if he's really enjoying, as if he's eating. I've seen, I've been like that myself, but I'm going to be eating uh, ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I, I saw people do that. Even today, as I was coming from court, because I was, that's why I was not there at 7 o'clock. As I was coming, there was another guy who was having BMW Cabriolet, you call it? No cover. Yeah, yeah. yeah Cabriolet. And he was just coming beside us who were right there at the same time. Then one time he just, whoo, 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 whoo. You know, he was really making noise. He really wanted people to say it. And I'm thinking, probably, this guy is thinking that's important, you see. He's, he's probably thinking it's important. Because he doesn't have anything to fall back on. Yeah. When you don't have any other thing to fall back on, you begin to fall back on salary, car, or things like that. Yeah, that's just what I'm going to say. Hmm. Okay, guys. Mm, this is serious. But I'm enjoying, keep your comments coming. I'll read it later. Even if I don't read it now, I'll read it later with popcorn and, you know, it's going to be fun. So keep them. <laughs> oh, you can say, Lord, nobody can go. Okay, can get angry. Don't worry. We are all learning every day. May the Lord help our men and women. Thank you, Monica. I think that was when I was saying that. Don't shoot the messenger that, you know, yes. Thank you, Monica. And then Theophilus says, if our present day woman, here we go again. A present day woman sees someone like DSA with, with the kind of principles our ladies who pick serious race to accept. Away from me? No, to accept. Ah, towards it. Yes. So, yeah, that's a good point. But not pick a race. I don't pick race is the opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I get your point. Yes, of course they would accept. They'll probably think it's too good to be true, but they would accept, yes. Uh, Chioma says, Pastor spent almost three months on this topic. He has done justice to it, both for men and women. YouTube is our friend. So thank you very much, Chioma. That's good advice. That's because it's on YouTube. Yeah, that's what she's saying. And then we have good words, sir. Thank you. Uh, yes, it's all the YouTube. Yes, yes. Somebody is agreeing. Well done. Uh, let me see. I have a huge problem with men make such references so this is like um the reference about i'm the head i'm i'm the man yes yes everyone would uh that's a marchi saying that i have a lot of respect for pastor sunday that's jimmy that's saying that no sir not at all men are like you 
So no, no, sir, not at all. Men, no men, men are like you, are not like you. Uh, I've noticed that Russian or Russian speaking men are like that to some extent. Hmm. Julie is saying that she's noticed that Russian. Julie, are you sure about that? You see any Russian men or Russian speaking men that are like that? Yeah, because she's been in the church here a lot. Okay, so they're giving you their yeah, salaries. Yeah, no, because she's been to the church. Yeah. And all the time she has come to Russia, she's only come to the Embassy of God Church. And a lot of people are doing this in the Embassy of God. So this is not strange here at all. Because this is what I've taught over the past 23 years. Mm. And people are living like that, just regular right now with the Russians, yes. But not the ones in the, in, who are not Christians. But if they are not Christians here... Yeah, Normally, the husbands sometimes will be drinking, and if they are drinking, the wives will normally steal the money, take away the money before he drinks it all. Okay. So maybe that's another case, yes. That could happen. Okay. Someone says that uh, it's a great principle and worthy of emulation. That's why, are they think, why are they reacting as if this is strange? So it's strange. Can we just agree that it's strange, please? It's strange. That's what no, we are I, doing. I think you have not done investigations <laughs> and research. One zero point zero one person, one person out of seventy plus people can say that yeah, their husband okay. does I think that. We still need to do research in different countries. Okay, we will put a poll out there. If your husband gives you your salary, say ye, yes. Okay, and let's see. Let's see before we end this. Okay, we also have. I have seen. I have seen. Oh, I have not seen any man like DSA, and I have been over 35 years in Europe. That's just insane, that. Okay. My husband gives me all his take-home pay. That's Gloria. Well done, Gloria. Mm -hmm. D says, it's, bec um, it's because of this divorce rate, especially here in UK, <laughs> both in black and white. And then Nike says, African men are termed, uh, termed woman rapper, when they act this way. You see, this is even our other woman saying that African men are <laughs> woman rapper. Hmm. Knowledge sets free and puts you on top. Me... Okay, talking about the divorce rate. Mm -hmm. I don't see any problem with that. If Pastor Bosse were to divorce me, was to divorce me and leave, I think it's a noble thing for a man, not just me, but for any man, to let the lady take anything she wants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you've got to let her take everything she wants. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, give her that priority. <coughs> let her take care of herself. Then you take care of yourself. Or if you have a home, it's better for the man to leave and leave the house for the lady. I think that is so. That if you already have that kind of resolution in your mind, then I'm not afraid of giving something to her right now. Uh, but if you have, if you want to keep it, and you are afraid that she will take it from you, yeah, definitely I understand that why you would not want to give your salary or your money out. But yeah, I think I'm just thinking, or talking from the Christian point of view. Mm -hmm. Like as Christians, you know, you have trust. You know, you believe in each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, you forgive each other and love each other. So, I guess yeah. that's the way I'm... I think the poll is working because we're getting some information right now. Live and direct. Okay, um, someone says... Me, I be financial controller for my household. Mm -hmm. That's Gloria again. Uh, Flair says, yes, some stereotypes on women don't have to drive to drive Christians live. A woman behave like a queen when she knows and is treated like a queen. Stella is saying, well, I am the minister of finance in my home. Well done. Well, that's two women now so far. <laughs> DSA, for a man to give the wife his income, okay, I've read that already. My husband also handles everything over 
and trust me totally. That's Ola Inka. That's that's three now. Wow. Ha. Hmm. Okay, you are getting disappointed. Yeah. No, I'm not getting disappointed. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm the one who is right. That's what I hope. This, That's what I hope. It's not strange the way you were treating it. Mm -hmm. But why didn't they say it before? I, I suspect <laughs> you guys. Why did you say? Why are you just saying it now? Why did you say yes? That's how it is. I agree. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Chiamma says, Pastor, my best teacher on this platform is the, is that people. My best teaching on this platform is that people should leave marriage alone and focus on their purpose. Only those who have accomplished purpose should consider marriage. Okay, Chioma, good point. So you're giving people a hint that if you can't do all this, just forget about marriage. <laughs> let it go. Yeah, let it go. Thank you, Chioma. Wow, we have some some luck, lucky woman here. Glory be to God. <laughs> you can't say we are so lucky. It's not luck, like Pastor said. <laughs> This says that uh, it's true. It's not all men that give the the room of trust and responsibility to their wives. I thank God because I am one of the fortunate women. Who is that one? That's D. So that's another one. That right has there. a husband that brought good wisdom. That's four. That's into four. The marriage. He always encourage her marriage to run you on the same that that No, excuse four. me. She didn't mention anything <laughs> about money. <laughs> she just said she's fortunate. Okay, it's D. I agree with you. Good. Lucky woman. Yes, that's right, DSA. I've got here. Theophilus says, DSA, some of the men don't have identity. Uh, no, identity. Some of the men don't have identify or identity, I think he's meant to say. They don't even know who they, they are or how to treat a woman. So they embrace their income as their identity. Yeah. You're right. So, you're agreeing with DSA. Well done, Theophilus. Well, it's not good agreement, but it's good. Uh, Monica says, Pastor Sunday is 3% of men that can give their entire income to their wives, even to trust the money to their wives. Please, God help us. So, even this person, no, Monica is saying that only 3%, even to trust the money to only their wives. 3% okay. of men that can do this. Uh, Riyami says many people have identity crisis. Pastor, that's a whole topic on his own. <laughs> Just laughing with popcorn, yes. Lol, and single people thinking they are going to be single for a long time because of all we have learned about what relationship will be like. Or maybe it's just me. Oh. <laughs> I'm actually saying single people are going to be single for a long time because of everything we've learned on this platform. So meaning there are no men there to apply all this. Okay, I'm a business I'm a businessman DSA. I transfer eighty percent of my profit to my wife account after every deal. Good principle. Profit, you said though. Good. Uh, Rinda said, this is what I am <coughs> practicing with my wife. I believe you see, so the much. The men now are coming out to say it's the same thing. I believe so much in com in common purse. It is helping my home. Very good, Rin. Ifoma says, he does not. Yeah, he does not. He does not give me. He does not give me. I have access to his account, and he tells me when he is paid, so I can do what I I have to do. Very good, Ifoma. It's the fear of divorce that the majority of men don't open up to their wives. Mm. Okay, well, I meant beyond. I I meant beyond God's embassy, though. That's Julie coming back. It says I have Russian-speaking colleagues and friends who have quite positive and honourable opinion on women, at least in comparison with the rest of the secular world. Not in the way DSA treats them. However, their standard is high, higher than what I am usually used to. Okay, she's just explaining about the Russian. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's good. If your man, if your man's parents go to get got to know, a lot of pressure would be on the woman. Some family members can even kill the woman if the man is like this. Oh, as in way as you said, my wife is one in charge of money in Ooh, our home. Ooh, you see? Yeah. Well, there are many. 
Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, guys. Uh, I, I don't believe you, but it's all right. <laughs> okay, well done. Guys, okay, I'm going to have Pastor Derek come and talk to us. I don't want to miss that opportunity to hear about uh, what Pastor Derek thinks. So we're going to Yeah, swap. because he's been listening to those. He went to YouTube and he knows exactly what we're talking about. That men could be good. Men could, if they know, you know, what they need to know. Okay. Wow, I'm so excited to touch on this topic today because I've been devouring these messages that I found on YouTube. I had no idea <clears throat> that Pastor had so many of these messages. You know, one of the things that he said that fascinated me was that you don't have a right to marry just because you come of age. That really shocked me because in our culture, in Canada, in North America, maybe the same where you are, uh, you get married when you come of a certain age and you find somebody attractive, you fall in love with them, and you just get married. And you enter into marriage hoping that you'll make it. And I think that hoping. Hoping. Hoping and praying. And I think we see the divorce rate in the church. We see the divorce rate in the world. And Pastor Sunday began to talk about how you have to build like anything. We wouldn't go in and start a business blindly. We wouldn't build a house blindly without a blueprint. Imagine you're going to be building a marriage, something that's supposed to be for life. You're going to be building a family. You're going into it totally inexperienced, not knowing the ins and outs of it. Why wouldn't you study and learn how to do it right? So this was, for whatever reason, just a new thought to me. And I think maybe it's because we don't put so much priority on family and marriage, maybe. We put priority on ministry. We put priority on so many things. And often... We're good at living certain Christian principles from the pulpit, but not necessarily behind closed doors. That was one of my shocks in ministry and traveling, was seeing that people lived a certain way from the stage, and the family looked so presentable, everything looked in order. But then behind closed doors, you get a shock that it's absolute chaos. And uh, this is because we need to prioritize marriage and family. So Pastor Sunday challenged me, to go into YouTube and look up some of these messages. And, you know, I had a perspective on what they might be about because you generally hear around the world, and if there are marriage ministries or family ministries, you generally hear the same thing being taught. You get a book on it, you generally hear the same thing. Just listening to the first message, I was shocked. I heard things I have never heard before. Not the normal... Not normal at all. And I've ministry I, Christian message. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Totally unique. It was like as I listened to message by message, it was like a blueprint. It was like an audio blueprint to systematically prepare for marriage, how to know when to go into marriage, building a marriage, even about raising children and all of that. And I began to sit there. And come to the conclusion, you know, I've been listening to Pastor Sunday's sermons for a decade, you know, four to seven times, devouring his messages. And my favorite series has always been his messages on the kingdom. I'm beginning to think that his messages on family and marriage are just... Um, even better than those ones, huh? I'm beginning to think that because you have to live with that person for the rest of your life. Mm. Your ministry can come and go. Fam your family, your marriage can make you or break you in, the, in this world today. And so I was just astounded. I haven't been able to put these messages down. What's been going through my mind is how can we package them? How can we make them visible? Because if you go and buy the popular Christian marriage books out there, and, and we can name them, they have some good content. But they are not as revelatory as even 45 minutes of Pastor Sunday discussing this subject. And there are hours and hours of this on YouTube. I couldn't believe it. 30 hours. 30 hours. On, on every subject. And I thought, I am totally without excuse. You know, I'm planning to go into, into marriage. And I just thought, the more I was listening to these, I thought, how could I have ever done this without this? And that's what I began to ask myself. So I'm encouraging everybody to go into Pastor Sunday's YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, they've, got, they've got to take them in series, not just, yeah. it's a series that matters. Just go to the channel, just pick one one there. 
No, they series. have to follow the series. If you have to write down, make a list of the series you want to go through. Actually, they're there. If you go to playlist, that's so, something they can. So playlist, you go to playlist first, and then you'll scroll down. And then as you... You'll, you'll see different topics. You'll right. see different segments. And you've got to click. Those aren't just one message they contain. You'll see a little number there. Right. How many messages are on that subject? You click on that, open it up, and just take them... Just take them one at a time. I've begun to send them to some of my disciples. And, you know, people cannot... You won't believe that this content is out there. You can have a, a blessed marriage, a blessed family. And the instruction manual in audio has been prepared for us. So I just encourage you, you know, I'm diving into this. And I encourage you to do the same. So, my... <coughs> Thank you, sir. I have a feeling so, people still won't do it. Yeah. <laughs> people still won't do it. That's the feeling I get. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Guys, um, you've got to check out this YouTube videos on relationship and marriage. The playlist is there. Please check it out. I know we ha I had a lot of laughter and fun with this, but this is really serious. Like Pastor Derek said, marriage can make and break you. And if you can't do this, maybe you need to listen to it over and over again. He said he listens at least four to seven times to each um, uh, teachings. So if you do that, maybe you will get, get it. Let uh, God or the Holy Spirit inspire you. But, you know, inspire yourself to do the right thing. These people are saying things that are proven, especially Dr. Sunday and some of the women that and men also that are um, saying that they do that with their within their relationship, they seem like they're really solid to me. So don't resist it. Just do it and be happy. Have a happy life, a happy wife, and you know everything will be okay. So, guys, let me just thank you for today. We answered, I think, was just two questions that we addressed today. But better than well, it's not better. It's never better. Yesterday was the best. For me so far but actually no actually the other day was the best oh no no there's another day okay right i have a few best all right okay <laughs> let me just say that thank you again for joining us please share this and also copy it and send it to friends on whatsapp on messengers any method that you want to send it to other people they might benefit from this send it to your partner if they're not watching with you you know, send it to them. I think, you know, they will thank you in the end. And you will thank me later. Um, I'll read all your comments and, and laugh as I do. Uh, let me read this one. African parents will take it upon themselves to arrange a wife for their son after a certain age without preparing the son for the responsibility ahead. This is beginning to, to this is the beginning of the end of the marriage. Um, as the parents become the head of that home. Okay, I think this is um, when, the, when Pastor Derek started with, uh, you know, being of age and getting married and not being prepared. So that's why Chinwe has got this. Yes, that's true. But again, thank you all for this evening, for your time all day today. We'll see you again tomorrow. We're going to start, probably going to start early. The countdown really has begun. So, Dr. Sunday's birthday, Golden Jubilee. Ah, 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 ah. You know how I feel already. I don't need to tell you that I'm not calm. You know I'm not calm. But evidence in the next few days, as people are coming in, I'll be interviewing them, and you will be seeing everything that is happening as they're happening. So I hope you will join me, you will join us, and we'll see you just certainly tomorrow. So, adios. Bye.